So welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to everyone that's joining us today. We're very grateful for your time and appreciate uh, the fact that you could join us. Uh, as Katie mentioned, we are live here in Madison, Wisconsin at DNA Star headquarters uh, for today's webinar on protein structure prediction. And to give you some uh, an overview and some insight into some work that we've done recently in our proteomics applications and what we have planned for future development. Uh, my name is Tom Lynch. I'm the Vice President of Sales here at DNA Star, and I am joined here with Dr. Steve Darnell, who is our team leader for our proteomics applications at DNA Star. Steve? Hello, everyone out there. So, here at DNA Star, try to advance the slide. There we go. Uh, we are most interested in offering an integrated solution for sequence and structure analysis. Um, the applications we developed over the years cover a broad range and spectrum that covers most biochemical research. Uh, the company was founded uh, focusing on applications supporting molecular biology workflows. Um, about 10 years ago, we transitioned into supporting genomics applications once next-gen sequencing became uh, available and popular. And more recently, we focused our, some of our attention on structural biology applications, and more specifically, uh, the viewing and sequence analysis of proteins, and more recently, uh, structure prediction uh, and modeling of three-dimensional protein structures. Um, so really, in a sense, um, the unified analysis theme in our software um, is really displayed in that a researcher can go from nucleic acid to gene sequence to multiple sequence alignments, variation detection, and then on to protein structure um, function and functional analysis. Um, our applications are connected to one another, uh, which provides seamless access to data and allowing each application in our laser gene suite to provide powerful uh, analysis solutions so that researchers can really dig in uh, for, for more advanced study. We provide access to our laser gene suite of applications through many formats. Um, certainly, we are providing solutions for desktop computers that can be accessed through individual machines through a network or provide licensing through institute-wide uh, licensing solutions. More recently, we've also expanded onto the cloud to provide our solutions to be accessed through a cloud workstation, through data drives hosted on AWS uh, cloud solution, as well as we give researchers the ability to tap into the Amazon uh, cloud solutions through a couple of our applications for um, actual analysis. Um, we do provide access to do not only next-gen sequence assemblies in the cloud and tap into the AWS resources, but also in protein structure prediction, which we'll be talking about uh, uh, further today. Um, this really kind of gives our researchers the unique advantage in that sometimes very computational heavy uh, analysis or assemblies or predictions, um, sometimes you might not want to tie up your local resources um, during those predictions or uh, running through those algorithms. So this kind of gives us, uh, our researchers, nice flexibility in that they can tap into um, cloud resources. But today, we're here to talk about our structural bio biology applications. Uh, Dr. Steve Darnell will be kind of leading the discussion, some of our recent advances in our proteomics applications, and more specifically, our NovaFold application, which is something new to the laser gene suite of softwares. Um, this is a program that Steve and his team has developed um, for accurate, highly accurate uh, protein structure prediction and modeling. Um, Steve and I, we were just in Boston recently for the Protein Engineering Summit, um, and we were fortunate enough to have a lot of uh, exciting discussions with researchers and scientists um, in the proteomics and 
uh, bioinformatics fields um, and, and learning kind of about, more about some of their challenges that they're facing when generating protein models when, say, uh, a protein uh, of unknown structure, um, you know, there's nothing really similar in terms of sequence identity uh, of known structure. So we're going to expand on how we kind of, we, we're helping researchers today overcome overcome some of the hurdles that they're facing. Um, Steve, I'm going to pass it over to you. Maybe you can kind of give a, a brief background um, on our tool for structural visualization and analysis, and then kind of move into more the structure prediction with NovaFold. Absolutely. So uh, to start with, I was just going to talk a little bit about Protein 3D. And this is our first application uh, toward uh, doing protein structure analysis that we introduced a couple of years back. Uh, protein 3D uh, is a molecular viewer which has uh, a number of integrated tools for doing uh, sequence bioinformatics as well as some initial structural uh, analyses such as performing uh, pairwise structural alignments as well as calculating molecular and solvent accessible surfaces. Uh, in terms of the bioinformatics uh, the capabilities, we, we have a number of conventional uh, sequence analysis tools, things that are, you know, started with trying to do uh, secondary uh, structure, or secondary structure prediction and hydropathy calculations and some other biophysical properties. We also have um, a, a panel of proteases that you can be applied to your protein sequence to look at protein, uh, a protease uh, cleavage patterns. And additionally, we also have um, some domain annotation capabilities, specifically the, um, the one in Protein 3D uses the ProSite uh, database at, uh, for looking for both small pattern motifs as well as larger domain um, regions as well. So we started here with the intent of trying to make an easy to use molecular visualiz uh, visualization platform where uh, it'll do m many of the things that you would expect a, uh, um, a, a molecular visualization to perform. You can do all sorts of different types of renderings. You can perform selections in any of our views such that uh, you can get some feedback about the either the residue or the regions that you've selected. Uh, we will go as far as to display some biophysical property calculations. Uh, based upon the uh, either selected residue or regions, including providing some secondary or, or some uh, two-dimensional um, uh, chemistry graphics as well. So we, we try to uh, have this integration throughout the entire platform with uh, what you're clicking on is what you're actually analyzing. Yeah. So, so Steve, uh, you know, I've been talking with a lot of researchers lately, and it seems as though uh, homology modeling is, is a fairly standard practice in the, in the field of proteomics, um, protein engineering, uh, more recently in antibody development engineering. Um, you know, so, so homology modeling has kind of become fairly standard for generating structural models. However, you know, your team has implemented a much more powerful technology and strategy into our software, and perhaps you can kind of talk about uh, the genesis or the start of, of NovaFold. Absolutely. Um, NovaFold uh, is a uh, is a little mo is more than homology modeling uh, in terms of uh, structure prediction algorithms. It's it is uh, was developed in partnership with uh, Dr. Yang Zhang at the University of Michigan, and it um, takes a different approach to the structure prediction problem. So homology modeling traditionally uses sequence alignments to try to um, provide mappings between a protein query sequence and known structures, then using those known structures to uh, form the, the scaffold, the backbone of your new model. Uh, the ITASER algorithm, which is what is at the foundation of NovaFold, uses a different approach. It's a hybrid approach, which uses uh, a protein threading, uh, protein threading technology, as well as ab initio style techniques. Protein threading 
uh, actually uses more than just sequence to, uh, to, to form alignments. It uses implied and predicted uh, uh, structural features as well as, uh, as sequence to try to select significant templates. Uh, NovaFold does come with a, um, a non-redundant uh, set of the protein data banks, so you, we will actually have an automated workflow that starts with a protein query and performs a template search and then performs the further confirmational searches and refinements to make these final uh, all-atom refined models. Now, the, uh, mentioning the, before the benefits of uh, protein threading, it is, a little, it is different in, uh, when compared to homology modeling. While all approaches do very well when there are, are close um, or homolog, structural and sequence homologs in the protein databanks. So let's say that you have a sequence identity that's greater than 70% or so. Most tools are going to be able to do a, a pretty reasonable job, including NovaFold, uh, for creating a final, uh, creating a, an accurate model. That problem, though, gets harder and harder as that sequence identity starts to diverge. As you get toward the 50% sequence identity level, homology modeling really starts to struggle because the quality of the alignments are what really drives the quality of the final models that are going to be uh, three-dimensional three models that are going to be constructed through homology modeling. Now, because uh, structure, or excuse me, protein threading uses implied uh, structural, characteristics, uh, structural characteristics such as secondary structure and solvent accessibility and internal contact maps it starts to be able to identify deeper relationships, and it can start to, it can still create very good models at the 50% sequence identity level, and it can even go down lower into the, the 30, even sometimes the sub 30% uh, sequence identity uh, level, which kind of colloquially known as the twilight zone when, uh, from a sequence point of view, random things start to look similar to one another at that level. Sure. So uh, uh, usually when I've talked with uh, a number of our uh, uh, customers and other people who are interested in the technology, it, it, people are interested really in kind of the nuts and bolts about what this workflow is doing. And that's what I'll kind of highlight in this next slide here. So with NovaFold, uh, everything does, again, start with a protein sequence. And we perform a, uh, or we, we actually use um, a Cyblast search in order to create a, a sequence profile, position weighted matrix, um, over the entire query sequence. Now that is used uh, with machine learning technologies to predict secondary structure, as well as solvent accessibility. And we also extract um, internal contacts from uh, homologous structures that are um, selected uh, from our non-redundant set of the protein data bank as well. We uh, continue by collecting all of those features, the sequence and structural characteristics, and then we perform these uh, threading algorithms. We, we don't rely on any one. In actuality, we have eight independent and complementary protein threading uh, algorithms within NovaFold. Each one screens the protein data bank with its collected set of features from before, and they provide ranked uh, collections of significant templates from the protein data bank. Now, all those templates are collected and ranked against one another. And in the end, rather than just relying on one sequence, or excuse me, one template as the um, as the starting point for our, our, uh, for the structural aspect of of our modeling process, we actually use somewhere between 40 and 80 different templates. That number varies depending on the length of the protein query sequence uh, that's been presented. Now, from those collections of templates, we calculate distance and contact restraints from those templates. And then we start a series of different ab initio styled simulations. Uh, there are actually 14 independent simulations that occur as part of the standard uh, uh, structure prediction process, four of which are ab initio styled. They allow free modeling to occur throughout the entire template, or throughout the entire selected templates, versus uh, the remaining 10 are a, a more restricted. A style of uh, simulation where 
regions that have an identified uh, template are fixed to those backbone coordinates, but regions with non-mapping or, or w that don't map onto a template are allowed to be modeled freely as well. Uh, we actually sample hundreds of thousands of different conformations during this process, and we save and collect a, a couple uh, tens of thousands of uh, possible alternate conformations that the initial query sequence might uh, uh, fold into. Those, uh, uh, th this trajectory of conformations are actually then clustered using uh, um, a structural and energetic-based clustering mechanism, and those representatives are then moved further through the pipeline for building all atom models and further energetic refinements. So essentially what you've described is a very automated process where the end user simply puts in a linear amino acid sequence. Uh, this runs through the NovaFold process and the output is a predicted structure. So maybe we can explore then what the output looks like um, in terms of what the reporting uh, report looks like in NovaFold. So at the end of a NovaFold prediction, um, we, we present as many as five different models uh, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the query protein. <clears throat> Those, these representatives, again, are, the, are, these, are rep these models, these final models, are actually representatives from this clustering process, the top five clusters that were selected. We present, um, in this particular view of the report, um, some global quality scores to help quickly assess the quality of the models that are being uh, presented. All these scores are actually based on a confidence score, this listed here in this uh, image as a C score, wh who's, uh, the qual this score is actually influenced by the cluster size, the number of, of representatives that were in the, uh, associated with the cluster that this model is based off, as well as the density of that cluster. As well, and additionally, uh, that score is partially based as well as some similarity to the starting templates at the very beginning of the process as well. Now this uh, confidence score was used over a benchmark of hundreds of proteins and it was demonstrated by uh, Dr. Zong and his group at Michigan that this confidence score linearly correlates with template model scores, this TM score, and root mean square deviation. These are structural similarity scores uh, to describe how well or uh, how similar two independent protein structures are to one another. So a statistical regression is just used to extrapolate what that confidence score and what the expected uh, template model score and RMSD of this model would be to the real answer if it were known. Uh, after that, uh, we provide some additional analyses. Uh, one, one that's listed here is uh, similar experimental structures that, are, that look like this particular model. This is the start of, a, of an alternate workflow, or excuse me, a, a supplemental workflow that you can turn on or off uh, by your choice to try to predict small molecule binding sites as well as protein function. These similar structures are identified by doing a structural alignment of the, this model against all the structures in the protein data bank and then looking for real uh, TM and RMSD scores. And that's what's presented here, including the, uh, again, the coverage and the sequence identity as well. But in this case, it's the structural similarity which is driving this list of uh, similar uh, PDB identifiers. Okay. So we've kind of reviewed the genesis of the NovaFold project. We've gone through kind of the nuts and bolts of the algorithm. Um, and we've, if we've taken a look at the output, I think we're going to kind of jump back a little bit out of order and go to how the researchers are accessing NovaFold. So we offer researchers and the end user two different methods to access NovaFold for structure prediction. One is through the cloud access through our Protean 3D viewer. Uh, it's very straightforward and easier to use. A uh, user account is set up. There's a, a very straightforward way to log in, submit a linear sequence, press go. Um, that data is sent up to the AWS cloud. Uh, the, the prediction is, is made, and the results then are sent back down to your local computer. 
Uh, for the more advanced user um, who's looking to gain access to some restraints uh, and control some parameters, we also do offer a local version um, through Linux command line. Um, and this was you know, pretty much born out of necessity in that um, in some cases, researchers simply don't want to send sequences outside of their four walls. Um, Steve, maybe you can kind of give a little bit more detail on some of uh, the end user access uh, for the command line version. Sure. So, in addition, uh, the command line version has all of the capabilities that the cloud accessible version has with the addition of uh, some additional restraint options. These are ways to um, allow you to or select your own uh, template to provide a protein structure that you would like to be included in the prediction process. You can either choose to uh, just provide a, a PDB identifier and chain identifier, and we will construct the template and align it to your protein sequence for you, or you can provide uh, just the atomic coordinates and PDB format, and we will perform the threading alignment against your query and your template, or you can control the entire process and you can perform, or you can provide, um, provide a file that defines both the atomic coordinates and the alignment mapping so that you have the, the final say about uh, which residue should be mapped onto which particular structural features of the template you're trying to use. Mm -hmm. In addition, we also have the ability to uh, provide a list of uh, PDB identifiers that you do not want to be included. So you can exclude these templates from modeling process, from the modeling process. And this is usually uh, useful with um, iterative styled experiments where you perform one uh, prediction and you start to gain new hypotheses or maybe even identifying uh, uh, selected templates that you felt that weren't quite appropriate and that you want to see them excluded to let other ones try to be more dominant in the final prediction. Absolutely. So you've taken now, you've, you've built kind of a, a very strong base for the NovaFold application, but your team has also been really focused on um, enhancing this application. Um, you know, at DNA Star, we're very much focused on accuracy, and Steve and his team are continually trying to improve um, this application through better accuracy in the model prediction. Um, this kind of gets us into the enhanced, what we call enhanced template search. Um, here we have two structures listed. They're overlaid by um, a CASP 11 target structure. CASP is the uh, competition for, maybe Steve, you can expand on that a little bit. Sure. So uh, CASP is the critical assessment of structure prediction. It's a biennial global competition where it's a blind study where uh, groups from around the world bring their state-of-the-art tools to uh, try to predict targets without knowing what the real answer is. And then at the end of the competition, the, uh, the models are uh, compared against gold standards, the actual known structures that are finally released uh, through the protein data bank. Uh, so what we, we kind of hypothesized that there will be many, many conditions when the, pro, uh, the protein data bank will have a protein that has an appropriate fold for your query's uh, protein, but the confirmation might, might not be the ideal final confirmation for your particular uh, uh, for your for your particular protein. So we uh, decided to uh, construct a workflow that, again, it, it kind of inserts itself between the threading and simulation processes where we take these statistically relevant templates that are selected by protein threading, and we perturb them uh, through a mathematical construct called normal mode analysis. It provides large concerted global style movements throughout the protein structure. Now, these motions are extremely difficult, if not uh, nearly impossible, to model through conventional simulation techniques because they occur on a very long time scale, not the nano uh, seconds of, of simulations, but more on the micro, milli and microsecond time scale. So normal modes allow us to explore a larger conformational uh, region uh, around a protein structure, and we kind of randomly sample around that and then use energetic uh, scoring uh, uh, to 
select things that we believe are going to be better than the original template for the query sequence itself. Uh, those are introduced into the standard simulation pathway and it, uh, the rest of the algorithm proceeds as normal. So we've actually identified several cases where this has been uh, uh, an uh, the, our enhanced template search has improved our final predictions. The one uh, shown on screen is uh, the CASP 11 target T0773 where uh, the region highlighted in red is from a standard uh, prediction workflow. And while much of the rest of the protein fold is correct, this particular region was misoriented. The helix is out of place. It's actually kind of twisted. Uh, the final beta sheet isn't being created or isn't uh, coming back to the rest of the protein fold. But the enhanced template search was able to perturb the structure just enough, uh, or the templates just enough in order to make this particular confirmation accessible and it gravitated to the top of the list as well. And so the differences here, we uh, have seen, uh, you know, an RMSD without the enhanced template search, you know, as low as 3.9 angstroms. Lower is better in these cases. Zero is perfect uh, with an RMSD score. Enhanced template search actually improved it by uh, by two full angstroms in this particular case, which, is, which was a great example, actually getting into this high resolution level of uh, modeling, which is kind of conventionally set around a two angstrom RMSD. Absolutely. And we've tested this on a number of proteins and displaying some of the results that we've had in terms of improving of the model structures versus the known. Uh, but now we're ready for a, a brief uh, software demo. I'm going to exit out of the PowerPoint right now, and we're going to get into and show our Protean 3D application, which is actually the interface um, and viewer of three-dimensional protein structure and linear sequence analysis of proteins. It's also been the portal for Novafold Cloud. So, Steve, maybe you can go through what we have here is actually the report for a Novafold prediction. Maybe you can just highlight a few things on this report to give people um, just an idea of what to expect, um, where they can find, say, a confidence score so they know whether or not their structural model is, is, is good and worth viewing mm -hmm. um, and worth, uh, I would base, you know, some of their experiments on. So this very top section briefly is just the input that you gave into uh, the prediction process. The parameters that you set are also accessible in this details panel off to the right. But the first thing that we show is a listing of the top 10 templates that were selected for your protein query sequence, including uh, uh, scores of, uh, of percent coverage and sequence identity of this template against your protein sequence. Uh, these little mini maps are intended to show both the coverage and the sequence identity. We use kind of stoplight colors for, for, uh, for showing green as being uh, very similar uh, templates from a sequence point of view all the way down to red and even black when things are very uncertain. A little model overview area gives a quick um, highlight of all of the models that were predicted in this particular sample data. Everything converged onto one particular uh, solution. So there's only one listed here, but again, you can see as many as five listed here and uh, quick summaries of both the TM predicted TM score and the predicted RMSD. Again, uh, colored in order to try to indicate the quality of the metrics as well. So Steve, when the program brings back multiple models, say five, how are those then ranked? Uh, ranking, you know, it, uh, ranking is actually, um, uh, not as straightforward as, as it may seem. The TM score is often one of the, the metrics that we like to point people to because this is a metric of whether we believe that the predicted fold is correct. Uh, a predicted TM score greater than 0 0.5 uh, uh, typically means that we're very confident that the fold is correct. Uh, but this uh, cluster size is actually one of the strongest parts of uh, whether a model is going to be ranked as one, two, three, four, or five. Uh, what we per with, this is again remembering from uh, the uh, the algorithm. There are tens of thousands of confirmations that have been sampled and they've been clustered together. Typically, the larger the cluster size, 
the more pronounced and deeper and well-defined the energy well that this is, uh, structure is a representative of. So this is usually the strongest uh, measure of who is going to be Model 1 at the end of the day. Got it. Well, thank you very much. Um, let's head back to the PowerPoint. And we'll kind of get wrapped up here. Um, you know, Steve, I, I really appreciate um, your overview and review and, and uh, introduction to not only our protein viewing and sequence analysis application, Protein 3D, but also uh, Novafold for protein structure prediction. Um, I'm sure that many people in the audience are kind of curious. Um, you know, you've, you've focused on the viewing and, and the linear sequence analysis. Um, we've brought in, and we're very grateful for our relationship with the University of Michigan and Dr. Uh, Yang Zhang um, and the iTaser group um, and, and the building of Novafold. Um, your team has enhanced this uh, with, our, with our new template search. Um, what's next? So for, for this fall, we are uh, working very diligently to provide two new products. Uh, one is going to be based on protein-protein docking uh, using the Swarm Dock algorithm license from, uh, here it's listed as Cancer Research UK. Uh, they've recently have been uh, uh, moved into part of the Francis Crick Institute uh, uh, over in the UK. This is a flexible protein docking algorithm where it incorporates, again, this normal mode-based motion to sample flexibility during the docking process. And this algorithm is going to be the foundation of Nova Dock, which will be our first entry into protein-protein docking. Additionally, we're going to be extending Nova Fold uh, directly toward antibody engineering. Our first step is to provide uh, high quality structure predictions of antibody complexes, heavy and light chains in, associate, in association with one another is uh, uh, the very first step we're going to be doing. It, this will have um, a new template library tuned for the antibody modeling problem. And then it becomes very clear that these two products can start to work together uh, for trying to predict the uh, B cell, uh, conformational B cell epitopes on uh, antigens uh, by just docking our modeled complexes against uh, either predicted or real structures of experimental structures of antigens. And that, that, that is going to be a lot for us to do, but we're looking <laughs> forward to providing it. Well, it's very exciting, Steve, and um, we're certainly all looking forward to continuing to enable and enhance the ability of researchers to accelerate their research um, and, and, most importantly, deliver accurate you know, and, and quality answers. Um, as my professor in, in graduate school used to say, don't, wane, don't waste clean thoughts on dirty enzymes or proteins, and it's kind of a similar way. Don't waste clean thoughts on, say, models that aren't up to par in terms of, you know, basing uh, your research or next experiment on. Um, and to that, I want to thank everyone again for joining us uh, today. It's been um, Steve, it's been very exciting to hear um, the work that you and your team have done and, and what you have planned for the future. And so to that, we'll open it up for a, a Q&A. Certainly have, uh, you know, a few minutes to, um, to, to talk more with, with everyone in the audience. Um, we have a question coming in. Um, so the audience member asked, so we're working with proprietary data. Um, is it, is, are we able to use, say, their own structure files as a template for prediction in Novafold? Yeah, uh, that would be uh, the option that we were discussing before about being able to use uh, your, uh, provide your own restraints in this case in the form of pre uh, presenting a, your own template. Uh, that, that would be the, the very first way that, we would start, uh, that you would start down this path. You, it will be included as part of, the, of the, a small collection or the collection of other templates. You have the control to reduce the number of templates that are automatically selected by Novafold so that your particular template has a stronger um, influence over the final model. But we still include some of these other templates in order to provide a level of uh, structural diversity as we're performing the, uh, the predictions.
Okay. And kind of continuing along the lines of restraints and controls, um, an audience member wants to know what is the maximum size of protein that can be predicted using Novafold? Um, on the cloud platform, we limit uh, query sequences to be as much as 2,000 uh, residues in length. Uh, practically, uh, the, the, the local version does not have an upper limit, but as proteins get larger, currently uh, you are more and more reliant upon having a good template or collection of templates to base your models on. So uh, you, you need to be prepared to at least have that or at least expect some level of uncertainty in regions that don't have strong templates. With smaller proteins, less than 400, it becomes easier to find, uh, uh, to search a more ab initio style and rely more on protein folds rather than really good homologous templates to drive the prediction process. Sure, sure. Um, question coming in, um, how does Novafold compare to freely available um, structure prediction applications um, out there and available? Um, I can kind of take that. Um, certainly, uh, first is uh, throughput. Uh, with Novafold through various licensing um, options, uh, you're able to do many predictions at a, any given time. In most cases, it's, I guess in my experience, um, freely available tools limit you to one prediction at a time, um, whereas ours you can certainly do as many as you need. Um, the other is quality. Um, you know, through the uh, performance of iTaser, which is the you know, the core of our Novafold application. It's been the top automated application for in the CAST competition for over a decade. Um, and, you know, thirdly um, is support. Um, our team of technical um, support specialists are here to help and guide you through any project and answer any questions that you have. Um, let's see. Questions coming in. Um, ah, B cell epitope prediction, you kind of mentioned it towards the end. Certainly, uh, antibody engineering and development is a very um, hot field, certainly in therapeutic development and discovery. Um, can you kind of give some insight as to how our applications support uh, antibody development through B cell epitope prediction? Currently, uh, Protein 3D. Uh, uses a has a sequence-based uh, prediction uh, an, uh, method in the in its analysis view in order to uh, try to predict linear uh, B cell epitopes. It uh, uses a, a machine learning algorithm to uh, to use features like some level of hydropathy, um, flexibility, solvent accessibility, potential hydrogen bond donors, and things of that sort uh, for uh, con uh, basically using the input data to, to construct uh, levels of confidence about uh, linear regions that are, could be B-cell epitopes. Uh, again, conformational epitopes are something we're going to be able to uh, work toward in the fall with, uh, with three-dimensional models of antibodies and antigens, as well as we're working toward uh, constructing a uh, workflow to kind of mimic a linear style mapping approach where we'd be use overlapping peptides in part of the docking process as well. Excellent. Well, it's uh, we've kind of gone a few minutes over, um, so we're gonna we're gonna end our webinar there. Um, if anyone uh, did not have their question answered, uh, we'll certainly follow up uh, via email or by phone to um, answer any uh, 